My name is Jane Saba. I'm a senior marketing specialist with Thermo Fisher Scientific. What I do for Thermo Fisher Scientific is I work on the marketing team focusing on proteomics applications, specifically PTM modifications uh, such as glycopeptides, phosphopeptides, uh, and I also focus on conventional proteomics, uh, qualitative as well as quantitative proteomics. Glycosylation is one of the most common post-translational modification. 50 to 60 percent of all proteins are glycosylated, but the amount of glycosylation modifications that have been characterized is very low, about 5 to 6 percent at most. And a lot of this has to do with the fact that we've never really had technologies in place to go after these types of modification. Uh, glycosylation is very labile, and one of the most common ways of characterizing this type of modification using mass spectrometry is using collisional activated dissociation or collisional induced dissociation. This is a very rugged type of approach that allows you to characterize a lot of peptides, a lot of proteins, but unfortunately it's not the best way to go after glycopeptides. So the field of glycoproteomics has really lagged behind, let's say conventional proteomics or even phosphoproteomics. But with the invention of new technology or new techniques, especially electron transfer dissociation, ETD, allows you to now go after these modifications and routinely characterize them. And do this in a high throughput manner. You can do high throughput, um, large scale glycoproteomic analysis using electron transfer dissociation or ETD. The advantage of ETD, or at least with glycosylation, they're very labile. So when you target them with what was present before, the other types of uh, fragmentation or the type of techniques, glycans have fallen off. So you can never really figure out where in the protein or the peptide glycosylation was present or at what site. What ETD allows you to do, it preserves the glycan on the peptide or on the protein. So when you target a peptide, let's say with ETD, you preserve the glycan on the peptide, but you tar fragmentation occur occurs along the peptide backbone, allowing you not only to sequence the peptide, but figure out where glycosylation is. And that's a very important uh, requirement for glycopeptide characterization. One of the advantages that we have now is the launch or the release of a new software called Bionic which allows us to target and characterize glycopeptides, which is an issue at the moment because there are really not a lot of softwares out there that allows us to go after post-translational modification, especially glycopeptides. Now, because we do target glycopeptides with ETD fragmentation, and there really isn't a lot of reliable softwares out there to characterize ETD fragmentation, Bionic is a huge advantage for us because this software is really aimed at glycopeptide characterization, especially data that's generated from ETD fragmentation.